Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time for another unboxing and I just got in the Samsung Galaxy Book Go. This is an ARM-based Windows 10 laptop. This is not running with an Intel processor and as we've seen in other reviews of ARM-based Windows laptops, you will have a bunch of compatibility problems and the big problem with those other laptops we looked at was their price. They were very expensive and you didn't get the performance that you would expect out of a computer at that price point. This one is more affordable. It starts at $349, but unfortunately at the entry level price point here, you only get four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. That might cut it for a Chromebook, but not so much on a modern Windows laptop. They do have an eight gigabyte configuration with more storage available that might be the better way to go here. But I always like to buy the low end ones to see exactly how they perform at that entry price. Now I do wanna let you know as I unbox things here in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So we've got it out of the box here. This is the laptop itself. Feels pretty nice, pretty solid, and it looks a lot like your run-of-the-mill budget laptop here. And I'm gonna take back what I said about it feeling pretty solid. There is a ton of flex on this keyboard deck here. Let me give you another view of it. You can see how it just kind of bounces as I push things down here. So the build quality here is not spectacular. It feels like mostly plastic. Uh, the power button is here at the top, and it looks like it might need a charge because it isn't coming on. So we'll get the power adapter out here in a second, but it doesn't impress me from a build quality standpoint. It's kind of flimsy feeling, uh, but we'll explore more of that in the full review. Uh, let me go into the box here and see what else we've got inside. Uh, so it looks like we have a, a USB type C cable. Yep, that's what this is. So this will be for the power adapter, which is right here. And because these ARM based Windows 10 laptops don't consume all that much power, uh, they don't need a large power adapter, so it comes with uh, this little guy here that you might typically see with your Samsung smartphone. All right, so let's take this thing apart and see what's inside. I'm curious if we can upgrade the memory or the storage, given how little it has on the low-end version. And one thing that I was pleased about is that these rubber feet are not glued on. They actually just kind of snap in to the case, so it's actually easy to pop these off and put them back in. A lot of times computer manufacturers uh, basically glue them in and it makes it really hard uh, to get at those rubber feet later. So let me get the screwdriver out here and we're gonna take it apart and we'll see what's inside. All right, well, it was very easy to get into this thing. In fact, this is probably one of the easiest laptops I've taken apart over the last couple of months here. There's only four screws that you have to take out that are underneath those rubber feet. And again, they're very easily replaceable. Unfortunately though, when you get inside, there is nothing to upgrade. You can't upgrade the RAM nor can you upgrade the storage. It's got 128 gigabytes, but it's UFS storage and it's soldered right onto this main board here. So that is it. Uh, so you can take it apart easily, but you're not gonna do much once you do. Uh, it does though have a nice big battery here and that is uh, one of the reasons why you look at an ARM-based device like this versus an Intel one because they do get significantly greater battery life. And for this price point, I think that's going to be a very attractive feature. Now this is running with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C Gen 2 processor. And when we do the full review, we'll put it through its paces and see how it performs. All right, so I got it booted up. And again, we're gonna be diving into this in my full review because I'm first getting it started now. Uh, the display is not a touch display, but it does fold all the way back here. So if you've got kids that tend to get rough with the equipment here, you'll see that that display will run flat. But again, no. Uh, touch detection here, so you have to use the trackpad. The display is not that bright. The colors are a bit washed out on it, but it is a full 1080p. It looks like an IPS display, but I've seen nicer ones out there versus this one. So not bad for the price point, but it could be a little bit better, but it's good to see 1080p. 14 inch display here as well. And what I'm gonna do now is start getting all of my tests put together and we'll have a full review of this coming up very shortly, so uh, stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, 
Jim Callagher. Hot Sauce and Video Games. And Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.